Coming up, judge for yourself as being behind the scenes sometimes a little more fun for you. Also, this week's secret ingredient will turn you white, but not in fear. Plus a king-sized gadget. It's coming up on Great TV. Fire it up. Here we are from Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. It's the birthplace of American barbecue. We love saying that. Great TV. Uh, another episode going. The birds are tweeting or crowing. It's a beautiful day out here today, Bill. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Couldn't Jack be better. Jack Boy here, uh, three-time South Carolina state champion. Barbecue. Bill West with BarbecueTricks.com. And as always, Bill at BarbecueTricks.com if you want to send us email. Or Jack at BarbecueTricks.com. Barbecue Tricks. Or GreatTV.com. Uh, I'm at GreatTV.com. Or you can yeah. catch They're me at Carolina both great TV. Uh, actually, we got so many different ways you can reach out. If you go to the Great TV website, it's a good place to put in. We've got some things set up where you can ask a question. That's a lot right. of people are doing that and chiming in. And yep. We're actually posting them every week. So. And the Facebook page is as active as it's ever been. Yeah. Make sure you send us your great plates on there, too. The pictures are rolling in right now. We'll get to that in just a second. Um, first off, a letter that we got from Frank out in Birmingham. And he writes, hey, Jack, where does someone go to try and judge if they're interested in getting involved in a competition. So judging a competition. He says, do you need some sort of certificate and is judging free? Well, judging is not free, it's a volunteer um, and judging is great fun, I gotta tell you. And that is a great question, Frank. Thanks for sending it in. Um, you can get involved in, in a lot of different judging organizations with a lot, and most of the judging organizations are fairly local. The uh, Kansas City Barbecue Society has a um, judging organization. Their judges come out. In fact, that's what they are. They're a sanctioning and judging organization. And you go up to their website and they will let you know where the certification classes are and how you can get involved with them. You go to their certification class. It's an afternoon. Uh, you pay a, a fee for the, uh, um, for the class itself. It's, it's minimal. Uh, I, and off the top of my head, I don't know how much it is, probably around $50, I wouldn't doubt. Um, you go all day and they teach you how to recognize championship barbecue. Um, you actually eat food at a Kansas City Barbecue Society uh, um, judging school. The South Carolina Barbecue Association has the same thing. Um, they do an uh, all-day seminar as well. So you got KCBS, SCBA. And then, of course, there's the newest one, the Southern Barbecue Network, which is, which is the one that uh, we're very in instrumental in lifting them off the ground right now. And they are doing uh, certification classes as well. Uh, we're doing a thing called Certified City where we're going to the areas or the, the cities where the contests are being held, and we're certifying judges to get the um, event coordinators a good pool of people in their area and, of course, trying to get the communities involved in the, in the events that are going on and we're having a great time there and in that contest there you actually physically eat food uh, we cook food for judging and and it's all part of the certification process um, is it free no it's 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 not it's free to judge you don't you don't have to pay to judge a contest there's no fee to be part of a judging contest but you pay your own expenses um, you can go on Friday night a lot of people use judging as an opportunity to get away for the weekend they'll go to the contest on the weekend on Friday night um, you know, take an area like Myrtle Beach or something like that. It's a vacation destination. You go in Friday night. You get a you know room in a nice in a nice vacation city. Uh, you hang out. Uh, you know, enjoy the city for the for Friday evening, and then Saturday morning you wake up. You go to the barbecue contest. Uh, enjoy the festival. Enjoy what's going on, and then you're free to go ahead and go on Saturday afternoon. It's a great way to spend a Saturday. It is a lot of fun. I can't say it's as fun as cooking, but it's close. I really do See, enjoy it. I. You know, I think I, I did my first one. I'll roll some video of what uh, I did at Boone Hall, which is right. an unsanctioned uh, thing. But I liked it a lot because, one, usually a lot of people got to work till all the way through Friday. Sure. Mary, do you judge? Mary likes judging. She loves judging. Um, got to work all the way through the week. And then it's hard to, you, you got to take a day off pretty much if you work Fridays usually to, to, to compete. Competing gets kind of stressful. Competing can be a lot more expensive than that. Not only do you have the travel, but so it was a little bit easier on the wallet, unless, of course, you win. But you can't really win a judging. No. But I had a lot of fun, good camaraderie with, with the judges. Absolutely. And uh, ate a lot of 
good barbecue and some bad, but in general, pretty good. The really, the really cool thing about judging is when you get to the judging table, you are actually getting the best barbecue that a cook can cook. They are giving, they are turning in to the judges the best that they can cook. You can go to the samplings afterwards and, you know, get your wristband or whatever it is and go around and taste all the barbecue that's being done. But that's barbecue that the cooks actually haven't identified as being the best that it can be. So when you're judging barbecue at 10 o'clock in the morning or 11 o'clock in the morning or noon or whatever it is, you are getting the best barbecue that a cook can cook. And that's exciting to me. So for me, for me, I think it was better than cook sure. than cooking. So I think I may be more into doing that in the future. Plus, you can sleep. I mean, generally, you, it, you should get in there at 10 or something in the morning, right? You, don't yeah. have to, you, you sleep have to, in, enjoy the day. Yeah, you, know, you could actually yeah. have a hotel bed. I got to say, I like that. <laughs> what do you have the, you're, while you're in the... Uh, while we're in the trailer sleeping in a chair or whatever in the we're chair. doing. <laughs> That's not for me. So, yeah, give judging. We'll put some links to some yeah, judging, judging organizations. Great. I really, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of fun, and the people in, involved are all fantastic. Um a lot of different and do you have to have any sort of major skill for that or i mean once you you'll, they'll kind of treat you teach you what to look for yeah and the trick to judging is to make sure that you take apart as you take your personal preferences out of the equation um if you don't like something say you don't like vinegar style barbecue you really have to take it and put that out of your mind because you're going to get that and if you don't like it you're not being fair to the judges that are preparing the the food out there you have to bring your best impartial brain to the table i will say you also learn from a competing side i learned some things if i were to compete and stuff to share i did, Absolutely. I did a post on, on on barbecue tricks with yeah. the little things you don't really think sure. about are more i mean presentation in the box it, if you're being judged on presentation is one of the things you just it, you can't just be like you've, you've said before you can't just you can't plop just it plop in, in the box so anyway um great stuff beer today is a red brick red brick brown atlanta georgia cheers to you cheers to you um and our website of the week i'd open a new one i just was out website of the week website of the week is um foodbuzz.com which is kind of like the facebook for food yeah um foodbuzz.com is a great place to go i visit it uh once a week i've signed up for their newsletter um it's really uh, quite a uh show i think you were the one that actually uh mm -hmm. turned me on to that through uh barbecue tricks bill yep so go and you can buzz things up or buzz things down yep. or just kind of get social. You can there's a little widget for wherever you live. You can you know put yep. the widget on, whatever, and vote for your local restaurants. Just kind of a cool little yeah, social little site. site. And they're doing. They seem like they're growing every week. So I thought I'd give them a, a shout out. Food Buzz. Buzz. Dot com. Here's the food buzz. That's right. Uh, secret ingredient today. I said to you turn your white. Uh, mayonnaise. Mayonnaise. What can you say about mayonnaise, Bill? Well, you got mayonnaise, not to be confused with the salad dressing. Which is Miracle Whip, more yeah. or less. Which I actually really like using in different things. Sure. Um, the difference is man Miracle Whip has probably a little more, it's a little spicier, has a little more sugar, a little more vinegar in it. And more And mayonnaise, I guess, would typically taste more eggy. Yeah, egg eggy, that's pretty much what mayonnaise is. Mayonnaise is emulsified uh, egg whites. Uh, do, you, do you have any preference with, uh, Duke's is big here in the South. Duke's is big Hellman's. in the South. Hellman's, yeah. Um, when we're using mayonnaise in a, in a contest situation, we'll always use Duke's because, once again, I'll go back to my, to my rule of thumb, make it as recognizable as you can. And in the Southeast, especially here in the Charleston area, everybody loves Duke's mayonnaise. Now... Yeah, you, know, you don't really deal with this as much in competition because you're turning it in and it's for the judges. But when you're making a potato salad and you've got a, a backyard picnic or something, I mean, how worried my wife, MJ, gets crazy about, like, leave, you know, not having anything that maybe has sat in the backyard for a little bit. Yeah, it, it, food and safety like, is I'll important. Eat, I'll eat the heck out of that potato salad. Just give it to me. It still tastes good. I was I was uh, visiting health department statistics just the other day, and believe it or not, Bill, mayonnaise is the number one uh, carrier for foodborne illness in America today. Really? It's, it's even actually above chicken right now. Um, they get they get a little edgy over chicken. If you're having a, an event and there's um, chicken involved, they will definitely be there. But if there's mayonnaise involved, you can count on it. Um, it is just uh, it is a... Um, more or less a bathtub for bacteria, if you want to call it that. So my wife is right. Pretty much. See, there you go. As always. <laughs> Watch out. Don't, so don't keep mess it, with your mayonnaise. What's the trick? Keep it above uh, or below? Uh, keep it below 40 degrees if you can, 42, 
45, somewhere in there. Just keep it chilled. You can put a uh, potato salad, it's easy. You get a, a half pan or, or aluminum pan of some kind, put some ice in the bottom of it. Make sure your bowl is smaller than that and just put it in the ice. Uh, you know, keep stir it up every once in a while and it'll stay. It's not going to turn on you in, you know, it's not going to turn on you in 30 minutes or it, it, it'll, go as, it'll go as long as it can stay cool. But certainly if it's sitting on the table for two or three hours, you don't want to be messing yeah, with it. All right. It's serious stuff. Though. Yeah, it really is. You, it just, you don't want to mess with food borne illnesses anyway. It's really a bad experience if you understand. want to know what I mean. understand. <laughs> um, great plate today. Check this out. Beef ribs by, what's Gary? Gary Wiviot at lowandslow.com sent me a great plate the other day. Uh, he cooked some beef ribs. He cooked it on a beef plate and they look fabulous, I got to say. I love beef ribs. I do, I do no too. No one ever does them very much. I mean, the, the problem with beef ribs, it seems these days, is the butchers are, are trimming the ribs down so close that you, there's really not a lot of meat on beef ribs. But uh, Gary took some what they call beef plate and uh, roasted them up, made beef ribs out of them. And I got to tell you, they were some of the prettiest beef What's ribs beef I've seen. Beef plate. Beef plate is what they make short ribs out of. Okay. It's actually down the, it, you know, they got your baby back ribs and your spare ribs and they come from different place, places on the animal. Beef plate comes from a little bit further down on the bones, on the rib bones. Okay. And if they're a little flatter and a little wider. But uh, generally the cutters, will, generally the cutters who cut beef plate are cutting them for short ribs. So they'll leave about that much uh, um, meat on the rib itself. And it is fantastic. Sounds good to me. It really is good. Sounds good to me. Um, so where are you cooking at? North, North Charleston? Yeah, North Charleston. Wings and Butts at Riverfront Park in North Charleston. Certainly there's a chicken wing contest on Friday night that we're going to be in. It's going to be fabulous. And then there's going to be a uh, 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 pork butts our Saturday and we're cooking ribs on Saturday as well. Uh, Ten bucks to get in and get a wristband. All the chicken wings you can eat on Friday night. And uh, Saturday, of course, is the contest and there will be all kinds of food available out there. Come on out to North Charleston. Out uh, of Riverfront Towners, Park. I mean, the Riverfront Park in North Charleston is just a great, yeah, it, I mean, it's a great park. It's, and it's a museum out there. It is a naval museum out there and it is as beautiful as it can be we're excited it's the first time this contest has gone on it supports the local shriners here in the, in the charleston area and we're excited about doing it we'll put a link at greattv.com to it's going to be great the scoop on it this weekend come come see us come see us uh let's see here uh when you uh get a chance subscribe or like us send us email jack at greattv.com or bill at greattv.com we love getting that we love getting the great plates as well and actually when you go to the website actually look at some of the links in the ads that we have at greattv.com, like Spitjack. Spitjack. I don't know if you've seen much uh, on, on their website, but they got some cool rotisseries where you do whole hog spit on a spit. Right, I've seen that. I haven't seen anywhere else you get that kind of big, big kind of spit. Um, it's useful that for that kind of thing. Uh, right now, you spend, they say, over 39 bucks. Great TV viewers can get a free pair of leather grill gloves. That's awesome, and you'll need those grill gloves for our gadget today. Oh, that's right. We haven't even gotten to that, have we? <laughs> I was about ready to wrap up. All right. So let's look at this thing. Let's look. This is a uh, my friend of mine, Michael Boltman, who's in Augusta, Georgia, is is getting into welding, and he says in Texas this was a big deal. Uh, this is a what is it called? It's called a burn barrel. A burn barrel, and he says you put you put that little table inside there, and then you put logs on top and. Just it makes coals, right? It does, and uh, you shovel the coals underneath your uh, into your pit, and you have uh, live fire charcoal is basically what you got. Simple as that. So Simple. you can just fuel. It's just a barrel. He said it was amazing how affordable the barrel was. Yep, you can get those up pretty much anywhere. Wow, no. good stuff. So our gadget this week, we got it. Wrapping it up. Uh, we'll be back next week with uh, more fun and actually got another gadget, another secret ingredient, and all that stuff. So make sure you subscribe. Remember. Uh, Think global, buy local, stay sustainable, and for goodness sakes, hug your mama.